welcome to the um, Independent Wealth Partners Strategy Update. Um, I guess uh, we've decided that we're going to uh, going to do these monthlies, and I and I suppose the idea of them is to um, give you our clients an understanding of you know the latest updated strategies, what we think about them, how they can be relevant for you and your situation, um, and um, and then um, we're also keen to make sure that that we're bringing in you know all of us to to talk about it. So. Joining us today, we've obviously got Chris, uh, one of the other partners in Independent Wealth Partners, and we've got uh, Andrew and Lynn, who um, obviously also work in the advice team. So, hello, hello guys. All right. Um, so, first, the first strategy we're going to talk about here is um, is the is using or utilising the unused concessional contributions cap. Um, and Lynn's a bit of a specialist in this area, so she's going to take us through through this and how it works, and then subsequently um, we'll have a little bit of a chat about it at the end. So let's uh, take it away, Lynn. Well, thank you, Cameron. So today I'm going to talk about a very interesting topic, carry forward and use concessional contributions. This is actually not a new legislation. It has been out for a few years now, but recently we have seen a lot because it's just start to settle in. It's a really powerful strategy that people need to be aware of. And today I'm going to explain what it is with a case study and also explain when it is suitable. Awesome. So before I dive into our main topic, it's important for us to understand what concessional contributions actually offers. So concessional contribution are the money you put into your super fund before tax. Therefore, it's also referred as before tax contribution or pre tax contribution. It includes your compulsory employer contributions, salary sacrifice arrangement, and also personal contribution for which you claim tax deduction in your personal tax return. This type of contribution is taxed within your superannuation, generally at a rate of 15%. So for most people who are working, 50% is lower than the tax rate you have to pay in your personal tax return. So that explains it why making additional concession contribution can be very beneficial for some people because essentially a portion of your income will be taxed at a discounted rate. But there's also a limit on how much concessional contribution you can make each year, and it is referred as concessional contribution cap. The general concessional contribution cap at the moment is 27 and 5,000. And in previous years, this was 25,000 every year. And so what are carry forward and used concessional contribution then? It is also referred as catch up concessional contributions. And it is actually not a special type of a contribution. It is simply a rule that give you an opportunity to add more fund into superannuation if you haven't been able to do so in previous years. If you haven't put enough money into Superfund to maximize your annual cap before, any unused amount and this rule can be carried forward for five years automatically. So this rule started in the 2019 financial year and you were able to apply any unused amount from 2020 financial year. Did I get that right? Yeah. Oh, what you said. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you can only apply the unused amount if your superannuation balance is below half a million on 30 June of a previous financial year. And the superannuation balance here would include the balance of all your super fund. It includes your accumulation accounts and a pension account. And if you have defined benefit scheme, that will also be included. And also in order to utilize any unused amount from previous year, you must contribute more than the general cap before making catch up contributions. So you need to exceed the cap first. Yeah, now, of, that, of that specific year that you make the contribution. Yeah, exactly. So for example, if you contribute less than the cap this year, you can't nominate it as the catch up contribution. You need yeah. to go over the cap first. But so yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Do to run through that case study then? Yeah, yes. There you go. Now we have a case study here. So we got a client whose name is Mary, and she's earning 100,000 base income plus 10,000 super fund. And she hasn't been making any additional contribution into super fund. 
For simplicity, we have assumed that her salary and the superannuation does not really change for all those financial year. But uh, you know, in real in reality, normally it would change or vary every single year. And because in the first financial year, which is 2019 financial year, her annual concessional contribution is 10,000. So she put 10,000 in and it's less than the annual cap, which was 25,000 at the time. So this means from 2019 financial year, she has an unused cap of 15,000, which can be carried forward into the future financial years. And this pattern continues every single year after that. So in the 2020, 2020 financial year, her unused cap doubled. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the last, last line, the last row, so in 2024 financial year, she actually had, has 80,000 carry forward from all the past five financial years. So in theory, she could put over 100,000 as pre-tax contribution in that single one financial year. And one thing we need to highlight is if she doesn't make any additional contribution in the 2024 financial year, her 2019 financial year and used cap will expire. Yeah. So that's what this table is showing. And uh, we can move on to the next slides and uh, see how we made this case more interesting. So. We were told that Mary sold an investment property recently, like in January 2022, and she made a profit of 150,000. Her superannuation balance in April 2022 is over half a million. However, her balance on 30 June 2021 was just under half a million, which means she can still make catch up contribution and most likely can use that because hopefully the balance will go up. So the table shows two scenarios. In the first one, she continues to do what she has been doing, like no additional contribution to the fund. And in the second case, she is trying to utilize any unused amount from the previous year. As you can see in the table, it's very straightforward. Her income is, it, is the same in two cases, is her salary plus capital gain that she need to pay tax for. And as a side note, is half of her profit because we're assuming that um, she has been holding the property for more than a year. And the main difference between those two scenarios is she can claim a tax deduction of over 60,000 in the second scenario. So this brings her and the tax result to be almost 15,000 cheaper. Like her income tax, which is tax payable plus Medicare levy is significantly reduced. Although she's paying a little bit tax, like 15% in the superannuation, the total result is due tax save saving. So it's really powerful and beneficial, right? You just uh, put the money away into your retirement saving and you don't need to do anything else. That's yeah. 15,000 more in your pocket. I think, um, I think, one of the things that makes this so compelling and so interesting is obviously the tax saving. You know, that's fifteen thousand dollars in in tax saving that that people now have, and that money ends up in their superannuation account. So it's then compounding or growing at a at a at an interest rate, I guess. Mm. Um, but also it's compounding over time. So there's more money compounding over time. Um, you're better off having the fifteen thousand dollars in your name than in than paying that off to the tax department. Yep. It's also a, it's it's for a lot of people, um, people will often know or understand what the personal deductible contribution amount might be. I was, it's, they usually say something like, oh, it's $25,000 or it's 2,700 or something like that. Uh, but a lot of people forget about the unused concessional contribution cap. And it, so it gives you an opportunity to catch up, um, which, which is wonderful. So, you know, lots of capital gains apply and then subsequently yeah. you can claim it. Claim a claim a deduction against it, meaning that um, you can wipe off a significant portion of the capital gains. Exactly. Good strategy. And also, I want to mention it's those type of things that you don't know what you don't know. And yeah. there were a few cases I've seen that clients put money into a super fund, but they didn't know they can claim tax deduction. They didn't know yeah. they have not used the cap carry forward. So yeah. they didn't do anything, and when they came to us, and we were reviewing their past history and the unused cap, and we realized, oh, they're missing out on so much tax savings. Like, yeah. So, 
That's oh, why, okay. yeah. All right. One of the um, things I think most clients should know too, that it's, uh, as kind of Lynn said before, it's a five-year window, and I guess I like to think of it like a uh, like a slide ruler, I suppose. So as as we move forward in time, you your five-year window kind of carries forward. So we're into year four yep. now since the original changes. So within the next 12 or 18 months, year one or the 18, 19 year, as that sort of slide rule, we should go this way, uh, moves forward, that year is going to drop off. So I think it's something that I guess we sh we are aware of at this end, but in terms of if um, clients are thinking about this in terms of not even necessarily to offset like one big gain, it might be that, you know, it's, it's worthwhile utilising that before we just potentially lose it forever in next financial year with some extra money we happen to have lying around. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. No, that's that's great. That's excellent. Um, I think there's another slide here we might. Yes, run. just to summarize, yeah. what's the benefits and um, when you should utilize this rule. And the reality is, most people are not always in a position to contribute up to the limit every year. So this rule is most suitable for people who have broken work pattern or they have interrupt or irregular income. For example, if you have been staying home looking after the kids and just return back to your workforce or if you're self-employed or a contract water worker and your income has up and down in different financial years. So this rule is great for situation like that. And also another potential application is when you know you may receive a higher income in the next financial year or in the next few financial year, either because you are receiving more salary or you anticipating receiving a bonus or you plan to sell a significant part of your asset, such as the example I mentioned before, like a property or even some shares, or if you have some inheritance, you want really utilize those capital and also reduce your tax at the same time. So to sum it up, it's great for that situation, but like any strategy, it's not always for everyone. So that's why we need to emphasize there are restrictions on when you probably shouldn't apply this rule. And the biggest thing we need to highlight is superannuation is a long-term investment. The trade-off is when you put the money away into super fund, you won't be able to access it until you meet a condition of release. And under the current regulation, that means you need to be age 60 and retired, or you need to be age 65, regardless of your working status. So it depends on your personal situation. So the key message here, there's many factors we need to consider, like what's your um, future expense need? And do you have any plan to upgrade your home? And how far away to your retirement? So that's why it's a really a case by case scenario. And the last point is, it also depends on your personal tax rate. One thing people may forget is concessional contribution, when you when you put those money into a super fund, they are taxed at 15% regardless of your personal income. So unless your personal um, tax rate is higher than 15% after the tax deduction, you won't really have any tax benefit by applying this strategy. So that's just another factor you really need to consider as well. So that's basically the highlight. Yeah. Of, but yeah. I guess obviously, then you know, the, the higher up the tax bracket you go, the, the greater the tax saving as well. So yeah, you exactly. Know, conscious so, of limitations or on how much you can go in concessionally mm -hmm. uh, or before tax. But yeah, that's you know, the more tax you pay, the the better that tax advantage will be. Exactly. Actually, that's a good point because that means you don't have to utilize all your unused concessional cap in that's one right. year. Yeah you yep. can strategically spread it into multiple financial years. So you're always reducing the highest marginal rate. So. Yeah, I think that's, well, I think I've found recently for, um, you know, some clients who have joined us recently with employee share, share schemes that with the shares that are vesting. And we know, you know, with reasonable clarity over the next few years that there's likely to be um, uh, Vesting events, you know, it gives us some capability to help reduce the tax liability of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just thinking, this is perfect timing because we're 
what, middle of April, you know, it gives us a chance between now and the end of June for those clients who, you know, this might sort of ring a bell in their head with, um, you know, this is perfect. We've got six, what is it, eight weeks to, uh, to I guess, work out, you know, is this um, something that's utilisable for, that's not even a word, <laughs> something we can utilise um, for you to try and reduce your tax bill for this year? Exactly. Lynn, that's that's wonderful. Yeah, Thanks so awesome. much for sharing that. Thanks, um, there's lots lots of applications there, and and of course, um, you know we we're constantly on the lookout for these sort of things. So that's great, um, Andrew. There's um, there's been an update to or change in, in legislation around around the work test, um, and so Andrew, if you wouldn't mind if you can take us through some of that now, that'd be great. Just flip through the right side for you. Yeah, thanks, Cameron. Yeah, so what this one's about, it's actually good to see a, a change, uh, I guess, a positive change in superannuation over the, the past few years or a number of years. There's been a fair amount of tightening um, and, you know, some restrictions on, on capital. So this this one's, uh, yeah, certainly going the other way, I guess, if you're in that particular age bracket between 67 and 74. So the change coming from the 1st of July 2022. Um, so it's really a great opportunity for for you to uh, optimise your superannuation when you're in that age bracket. So basically, going forward, what you'll be able to do is make an after-tax contribution to your super. Uh, after-tax contributions are also known as non-concessional contributions, um, and you will no, no longer have to meet the work requirement. And that work requirement currently is uh, working 40 hours in a consecutive 30 day period in the year that you are you're making that after tax contribution. So effectively, that's called the work test and that's been removed. Uh, so that's that's a really good change. Uh, and a, a related strategy uh, is also the um, the ability to use what's called the bring forward rule, uh, which basically allows you to to uh, take future contributions, bring them forward and, and put them into the current year. Uh, so subject to meeting certain requirements, uh, which is what you can see there. Um, so effectively, you can bring up to, you can contribute up to 330,000 uh, in one financial year going forward, mm -hmm. if you meet certain requirements, uh, and we can sort of touch on those in the next slide. So you yeah, look at, that's, that's a big change. Currently, you're unable to use that bring forward rule if you're um, over the age of 67. So that's that's a big change. Yeah, it's significant, uh, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, and perhaps the best way to perhaps you know to think about is let's have a look at a, a case study. So Barry and Betty Brown, no relation, uh, both age 70 years of age, uh, and in August 2022. Betty's going to receive an inheritance of $660,000. Now, the ability to make contributions, uh, after tax contributions, one of the requirements is, is your total superannuation balance as of 30 June in the prior year. So in this case, 30 June 2022, uh, has to be under $1.7 million for you to be able to make a after tax contribution. In Barry's case, in this case study, his total super balance is 600,000 and Betty's is 700,000. So they're comfortably under that, that upper cap. Both are permanently retired. Uh, and as such, either are meeting the work requirement. Uh, so under today's rules, as you'll see in the table there, can they make it an after-tax contribution to their super? No. So today, if that, that inheritance incurred, uh, took place before the end of June, uh, effectively, they, they can't put that into super. They'd have to utilise it in some other way. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to make any contributions. However, going forward from the 1st of July, uh, effectively because of their superannuation balances and their ability to use up to three years' worth of uh, non-concessional after-tax contributions, they could each put in $330,000. So that total inheritance um, pool of funds can all go into super, uh, so that the, these limits apply on an individual basis. So clearly, on a on a combined basis or as a couple, as a unit, yeah, they can 
collectively put in six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So that's a, a great opportunity if if the position uh, presents itself for you to, to get some funds in the superannuation. The star there is clearly it's just a the call out there is uh, as I said a bit earlier that's subject to meeting certain requirements. So the upper limit is one point seven million dollars. So if you're if you're above that you you can't make a, an after tax contribution. However, uh, if you're under that, uh, there's some step changes, which I won't go through in detail now, but in, in broad terms, if it's under 1.48 million, uh, and that's at an individual level, you can put up to three years worth in, and then it sort of steps down from there uh, to 220 to 110,000, based on where you, you fall between the 1.48 and the $1.7 million. Yep. So just something to be mindful of there. I think if you're in, the, in that bracket, you got to speak to speak to us, I suppose, yeah, because yeah. there's some there's some intricacies and in triple I's that you can easily fall over. So you know that this ends up at, in that kind of bracket. This becomes pretty complex. So um, definitely not something you should be trying to do on your own. And you know, I guess to that point, the penalties can be a little bit harsh as yeah. well. So yeah. it's important to make sure you you seek the appropriate advice, and and that's why we're here to get in touch with us. This is such an amazing initi initiative, I think. It's just, just, I guess, uh, a lot of the discussions that we sometimes have with clients is kind of, the discussion is around putting money into superannuation. Clients are like, oh, why are you so obsessed with getting money into super? And it's it's really just about tax rates. So, um, you know, this is such an amazing opportunity to put $600,000 worth of funds. And as Andrew will probably touch on, um, you know, there's some, you can, dovetail this with some other strategies to really supercharge that um, and you get to you get to have you know big amounts of um, your personal wealth in a zero tax environment for the rest of your life that's that's hugely powerful for your outcomes and what you can then do with that money or that tax savings for your quality of life or for the people around you or for your kids or whatever what are the things that are really important to you are yeah that's right I think that's a good segue into the next Slide there, Ken. Uh, so, a little bit more around um, how how these changes complement some other strategies that are available. So, won't go in a lot of detail on these because they sort of require probably some specific and unique, unique discussion with uh, based on individual circumstances. But there's a thing called recontribution strategy, uh, and that what that's aimed at effectively shifting some of your superannuation funds from a, uh, a non-tax-free environment uh, into a, a tax-free component. Um, and that can be particularly useful if you have a self-managed super fund. Um, so that could be a, a future topic that we, we talk to you in more detail about. Another thing is uh, gives you the chance to optimise how much money you can have in pension phase, uh, and clearly, as most you probably know, when super, super funds are in pension phase, any investment earnings and capital gains are not subject to tax. So the more we can get into that pension phase, um, the less tax you'll pay. Yep. And lastly, uh, the downside is a contribution, which uh, has been in place for a couple of years now, uh, but that, uh, again, subject to meeting certain requirements, but that allows you to uh, put in $300,000 from downsizing your house into superannuation um, and that's again at an individual level so if you're in the fortunate position where you downsize your house or you've had an inheritance or whatever but you've, you've downsized the house at the same time and you've got the ability to, uh, to you've got surplus funds each of you as a couple each of you could put six hundred and thirty thousand dollars into yep. superannuation um yeah so that, again yep. just food for thought um Comes a significant amount of money, doesn't it? One point, yeah, one point two six million dollars. It's yeah. a lot of money to super, which will, you know, might fund fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year in retirement income. So, yeah, yeah that's um, right. It's um, it's probably worth noting too for those who are thinking about downsizing in the next little while. Um, the age eligibility has dropped or will drop from the first of July. So, um, if that's something you know, if you're post age sixty and it's something you're thinking about doing, um, again, you know, it's just Worth it, worth a phone call and exploring that with us. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, guys. Look, that was that was that was wonderful. I think, um, and you know, quite clearly, which is what the next slide is about, which I'll you know, click on now. Um, it's this is all general advice, not specific to anyone's circumstances or general in nature. Um, and if you, the only advice that you that you should receive is advice that is specific to you, because you know, getting money into super. Although it's tax effective, and we've talked about the tax effectiveness of it, sometimes um, sometimes it's not the best thing for you. So um, we always need to um, make sure that uh, we get that disclaimer out there. Um, anything else to talk through there? IWP advice team. Oh, no, I'll just think clear on you, Lynn. I was just going to say, yeah. Look, if you if if you're out there and you think it, that any of these apply, by all means, yeah, reach out to any of us. Uh, we can yeah, have a look at the situation and, and talk it through with you. See how we can, um, yeah, optimise what you have in superannuation. But I guess the, the important thing is it's, you know, superannuation is not a, you know, not the be all and end all. It's 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 a, a great vehicle to uh, generate, um, you know, a, a tax effective pool of retirement capital for you, but there's other, other options available. So it's not to say throw all your money in superannuation, but at least come and chat to us. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, for those of you still watching at home, this is the third time I've done this because we've had a few technology issues. <laughs> so the first time we were doing it, we did it, we were really upbeat. Second time, not so much. And the third time it's yeah. four twenty six on yeah. Thursday before Easter. Easter. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, I was going to say happy Easter to everyone, but um, you'll probably be watching this post Easter. So anyway, I hope everyone had a lovely Easter. Yep. Likewise. And Excellent. we'll um, be, speak to you all soon, I guess. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you. Okay.